Committee meeting. Sorry. Take two. <laughs> I mean, it's committee meeting for the Fallbrook Regional Health District. Um, we're reviewing the statement for uh, the month of March. We'll do roll call. Um, yes, we can do that. Go ahead. Director Brown. Here. Director Jeffrey. Here. Thank you. Awesome. And are there any public comments? Anybody online? We have no one on Zoom, and I didn't receive yeah. anything on email either. Yeah. yeah. This shows how important some people think we are. Definitely. All right, so review financial statements. Um, report number one, balance sheet comparison, um, February to March. <clears throat> For March, the total liabilities and equity are $12,367,032. Uh, For February, uh, they were eleven million seven hundred eighty-six thousand five hundred and forty-two dollars for a month-to-month -month increase of five hundred and eighty thousand four hundred and ninety dollars. Report number two: the income statement. Total net, in net income for the month of March is a positive of six hundred and twenty-one thousand six hundred and nine dollars, and that's due in large part to larger than expected tax apportionment. Would we expect um, a large amount of? Uh, tax apportionment for this next for April two. So we received a larger in April than expected. We already have that in, we already have that in hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, May and June usually become very small trickles. Mm -hmm. Are we within striking distance? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> was it from you that I saw the note from the? Um, county tax collector's office that we collected like a billion dollars in one day. In no, that, Texas. I did not see that. No. And I saw that in one of my contacts with the county, I guess, because I yeah. send out emails all the time and notices. So the county <clears throat> um, tax collector, I can't remember what the heck is his name? McAllister. McAllister. Dan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, was um, Advising and, and making a positive comment that the county had collected the most it ever had in a single day, wow. and it was a billion dollars. Wow. Our property values have gone up. That they have. Is that, <laughs> is that the dynamic? I, 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 don't, I think he was trying to maybe say that, but say even more that we were paying our taxes. Yeah, right. I'm surprised that the, the May receipt will be so low because I know. Uh, the number of people that view the due date of the property taxes to be April 10th. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the delinquent date, but if when well, maybe that billion dollar day was on the second. <laughs> I mean yeah. we'll we'll yeah. still have a, a reasonable, but it's it's considered much smaller than we typically would see for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it, we'll be good. Number three, profit and loss, actual versus budget based upon the approved budget. The district is over budget and year to date net income by $532,726. Report number four the approved annual budget for 2022 23. Um, in the packet is the um, approved budget, and there are no changes to the report. Report number five the late account statement. Uh, the late posted. Um, no dollars in quarterly interest earnings. The cost value is $2,484,586, with the fair market value of $2,451,069. The performance rate for the month of March was 2.831%. Our report number six, our CalTrust statement. The cost basis for this account is $5,800,802. The district earned $16,022 in dividend income this month and an unrealized gain of $57,687, bringing the portfolio's total value to $5,657,851. As of March 2023, uh, the one-year yield term on the median term fund for these firm Funds are located was 1.95%. That's a hair better than last cycle, I think. It's nice to have it say unrealized gain 
yeah. instead of unrealized loss, loss yeah, which we saw for several months. Yes. Report number seven, property tax revenue. Mm -hmm. The district accrued a tax apportionment of $692,696 for March. Report number eight, the check detail report. Jennifer, did you have any questions on the- I did not. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't really have any questions on that either. Report number nine, our visa statement. Anything extraordinary there? Executive Director? No. You'll see, you'll continue to see Home Depot. <laughs> I, I think we're, we're getting closer to having fewer Home Depots. Are those all related to the health and wellness center? They are. Typically, it's cabinets and refrigerators or dishwashers or cabinets and faucets. And I presume that that's uh, part of the community investment fund dollars? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So anytime we're having those come in, they're noted on the receipt or the invoice or whatever that it is CIF, community investment fund. Okay. So that Marnie knows to book those. Freddie, moving on to report number 10, the community investment funds report for March. This report shows utilized funds invested in the district's real estate primarily for the redevelopment of the community health and wellness, including maintenance repairs, permits, and consultants. For the third quarter, there was $71,302.72 spent. And the board makes or the committee makes a recommendation to the board to transfer seventy two thousand from Lake to the operating account. Actually, that's uh, incorrect. I had made that change. We had uh, we've already made our quarterly distribution last month mm -hmm. of the fifty one thousand. So we actually won't make this uh, recommendation again until June. So what's the amount going to be? We don't need to, we don't need to make any transfer. So we'll make. Well, any amounts will roll until a final transfer in June. Okay. So we don't need to make that recommendation. So then what is my what is my report going to say? Um, just that the third quarter, there was $71,000 spent for the total. Okay. But I don't think we need to make any transfer of funds. All right. The investments of the district are in compliance with the district's 2022-23 investment policy. The balances in the district's investment accounts give the district the ability to meet its expenditure requirements for the next 18 months. Actually, it's a lot longer than that, but who's counting, right? We're just consistent with our policy that says it needs to be. What else you got? I got nothing on that one. I say look all in order. They, you know, the pattern continues <laughs> through the months, mm -hmm. which and, is good. And which is good. Stability and consistency. Yeah. And your financials is what you want. Absolutely. Okay. So we can move on to the discussion items. If there's no further questions with regard to the financial statement reviews. Mm -hmm. Um and we can talk a bit about the proposed new bank account. So go ahead. So um, since the last board meeting, no one had any particular love of any other bank for us to go and research. Um, I, again, recommended Five Star Bank because they are working with a lot of special districts. They can make transfer quite easily. Um, and in light of our new situation with Pacific Western Bank. Um, having a holding bank account makes a lot of sense. So I uh, have reached out to 
Five Star Bank, they've already sent me the documents of what it would take to open an account. So I have those documents here. Um, we can move forward if that's the recommendation. We already have the minutes from the board meeting saying that the board approves opening an account. And then finance would also say, we'll sign and go from this account. Um, really the only thing that is of difference, we would keep the same signers, which is the two of you, as well as Barbara, who's been our backup as vice chair. Um, this would also allow Judith and I limited ability um, because this bank is not right down on the block, we would have to be able to have online access. Mm -hmm. um, that allows us to be able to pull statements or reports so that when the accounting team is online, we can send them statements or anything of that sort. Um, I think it would be probably a smart thing that we would put in the portal, not necessarily the board packet, but in the portal, the bank statement for review for a second set of eyes so that we have an ex another set of internal controls because we'll have two bank statements to look at. We'll have Pacific Western mm -hmm. and then we would have five star. And because you may see transfer monies in and out, we wanna make sure that that stays super transparent. Mm -hmm. So keeping those two bank statements in the portal visible for the finance team to be able to access. So it's my thought that with regard to Five Star, that the only transactions there will be money coming out of Pacific Western going into Five Star and then coming out of Five Star going back into Pacific Western. That Five Star will not be used to pay any bills. Correct. Okay. Correct. The idea is it is the liquidity holding bank for Pacific Western. And we would probably only have to have funds sent from five star to Pacific Western, probably quarterly as we do the grant checks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because then we can probably keep that um, account balance in Pacific Western pretty standard, right? As property taxes come into Pacific Western, if that account balance gets too high, we send it over to five star, or if it gets too high, we bring it over and we say, we need to make a late transfer and we put yeah. money into that, right? Um, but because during the various times of the upcoming fiscal year, you see the first few months of the year, we run a little bit red. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is we should be able to use those two counts to keep our cash flow balance, mm -hmm. right? But Five Star does not pay anything independently, only monies to Pacific Western. Mm -hmm. So Pacific Western stays our standard in and out account. Under $250,000. Under $250,000. Mm -hmm. Tracking, mm -hmm. tracking. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That sounds like a plan. It's got a logic to it. I like that. Logic is good. Logic is good. Okay. We do want to make sure that we're, um, that this account that Judith and I both have access to it. That has been one of the challenges to the, the Pacific Western Bank. Um, I, unless I'm here, one of you have to contact the bank. Judith had no avail availability. So I may bring that back to another meeting to make that change so that she can call the bank and say, a board member's gonna come in. Can we set up this transfer? We need the authorization number, that kind of thing. So. That has been um, a new challenge we've discovered this year, but we might want to change our practice. So are we going to just uh, be doing wires from one bank to the other? Yes. Okay. That's my expectation mm -hmm. on that. Okay, mine too. So I have a, a signature form that came from them. I've pre-filled it out with what I have. Um, what I what has to be filled out, they don't need the same personal information that you would need before. They do need a driver's license number and then signature, and that would be it. Um, again, because they know special districts, they don't need your social security and all the others that some of the more commercial banks have needed in the past. So if you're all comfortable, I would ask that we go that direction. Mm -hmm. So is that going to be in the form of a recommendation to the board? Or are we 
We could actually sign it now because the recommendation was made at the last board meeting that we pursue that. Okay. Okay. Then we need sign. Fill out driver's license information and then sign. That's pretty simple. I have my driver's license on memorized, but I didn't have right. the. I did not I have the um, expiration. I know the number. I can't remember the expiration date. <laughs> See, I didn't have the expiration date. Oh, okay. I only knew mine because it expired this year. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because what? It expires this year. Oh, I remembered it. It expired this year. It's always important to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, you're Speaking a month away. That, I need to go to the DMV. <laughs> go to the uh, one in San Marcos, the yeah, newest yeah. one. It's very organized. It, it's, it's like this. Picture. You can make an appointment if you want to, or just get there early. Or it's, for our negative worlds, have you ever gone to Hemet? That's where I've always gone. Because Hemet usually thinks. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not always nice. nice. You know, no, it's right. not. But you make an appointment. Thank you. And nobody in Hemet has a license. <laughs> That's so judging. <laughs> I hope no one from Hemet is listening. <laughs> Hey, what's my mailing address? <laughs> um, yeah, we're just being snarky. No. Um, once this is up and we're, we're scheduled, one of the things that I think I also want to bring over is the fact that Five Star also has merchant card services. Right now, you know, we use our credit card through Umqua, um, which has a very challenging online portal. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, and, and I know where you're going. Um, I would like to keep the activity related to Five Star uh, strictly as the holding okay. bank. Um, would be expecting then to draft money out of that account to cover credit cards, if that's what we had and whatever. Um, and I'd rather not. Okay. okay. If you want to use, if you want to go to Wells Park or someplace else with the credit cards, I don't care. Yeah. No. I, the the particular challenge again with our structure as a special district, um, and it it might be worth reinvestigating. Last time it was investigated, um, most of the commercial banks had a hard time understanding our entity, and they wanted a personal guarantee or. So unlike a business, mm -hmm. they wanted your personal guarantee. Sure. And it was sure. like that, no, we're governmental. That's not what we want. Umqua is one of those that works with special districts and understands the government. Well, oh, even um, <clears throat> when I was working for my previous employer, uh, which is a very large company, um, all of us uh, executives had American Express cards, mm -hmm. but they were tied to us individually. Mm -hmm. Right. We were paid for by the company. Right. right. So. And that that used to be what was done here with the previous CEO, um, and it was it had some challenges. Mm -hmm. So um, when in, we had to change here, we went with a whole different format. Um, we, I will probably bring up a conversation again about upping the potential limit for that credit card. Currently, that account is set at 6000 and we're finding with a lot of the expenditures of our ongoing expenses and or expenses for either travel or wellness center development, mm -hmm. we're maxing it out monthly. I mean, granted, we pay it each month yeah. on budgeted items. Yes. How long have we had the uh, arrangement? Two years, I think. Not yeah. long. Not long. Not long. So it might be worth looking at. Um, what I figured I would do is bring forward those expenses that uh, hit it every month for like some of our uh, software subscriptions and those things. Bring that amount so that you can see what that activity is. And we can do a little more of a forensic on it mm -hmm. before so that you're fun. comfortable with it. But I wanted to just at least bring that up as. Don't don't be surprised. You're going to see that conversation come up. Okay. 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 Well, it, as it relates to five star, my request is that it be strictly as a holding entity. Sure. If you want to propose that we have a 
another banking relationship for the credit cards and you want to dump or use something else in addition to that? I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Well, we can look at that and see if there's other options. Um, Umqua has been pretty easy to work with other than their online portal, which is, I think, DOS. Um, <laughs> did we use <laughs> the, so the previous CEO had an American Express that the district was paying for. Um, was but, it in the name of the health district? No. no. Okay. So it was just her account. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know how difficult it would be. I, I found the American Express arrangement really super convenient because um, it was actually in the company's name, obviously with my name on the card too, or all the individual officers. Um, but it allowed you to tie into your own checking account in that if you had personal expenses, you could also plug them in online into the account and then the money would come out of the credit card balance right into your checking account. So if you pay for something out of your own right account, then you could plug it in. Even if it was cash, you could still plug it in when you reconcile your, your credit card and then it would pay for the American Express and then whatever you wanted to have paid to your, uh, that you put out personally and go right into your checking account. Well, and we could, we could go back and revisit it. Um, we don't luckily have that much com complexity to ours. Um, so I would like to keep it pretty straight and clean. Mm -hmm. Again, we have three cards on that account. Um, Teresa holds one out of the wellness center. Judith has one primarily for, um, for admin. admin. We still have to go in and make the correction. It's still listed under Linda right. Bannerman. What are your difficulties with Uncle? Did right. You anything is uh, I, I have to essentially have a board resolution to mm -hmm. communicate to Umqua so that they can change the name on that. Um, but that will be its own paperwork that we'll bring forward. But I have no problem keeping away from five stars merchant. That's not a problem for me. So. Thank you for that. We'll get this account set up and then we'll um, we'll fund it from the LAF, some of the late funds that we just took out of operating. Mm -hmm. And I figured we could probably keep, uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a conversation, but we figured that we would keep that around probably 200,000 because that would cover those grant funds, right? That's a good yeah. starting point. Good. Yeah. Good. Again, keep us under the hat. Yeah. <laughs> keep us under the hat. No limit. Discussion item B. Is that what our, we're talking about here? Investment option? Investment option. So we had Bob Scholl of California Class mm -hmm. um, present to the board last time. Yes. We talked about mm -hmm. having a third investment vehicle um, with the expectation that more funds would be sitting in investments since we're not going to do a quick outlay of cash. Um, the expectation was that we could have a better set of gains by bringing in this third tool as well. So we would keep Caltrust, we would keep late, but we could add the California class option. Um, we are resource rich right now, so being able to put some of those funds into that might be able to show us a better return as well. I'm all for better return. Right now they're showing and they have tremendous. obviously they're legit. They have oh, yeah. a good reputation. Yeah, I mean they're a newer tool, but all the special districts yeah. that are with them right now are seeing a lot of growth and um, blowing reports on it. So we can have them again, that's not an immediate situation. We can have them come in and present specifically to you all at the next finance meeting if you'd like. Um, we had him present at the board meeting. What 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 else would he tell us if he if oh, he had only back? if you had more specific questions? Otherwise, we can go ahead and start um, the account opening option, and then just bring that forward. Yeah, I don't think that would be necessary for me. I don't I need any more info. Yeah, we got it. Then we'll reach out to him and um, get the information on what it takes to open that up. Um, and see what um, I'd like to do that after this account is open so that we can kind of settle to see what our account balances are before any decision of an amount is transferred into that. 
Would that come to the board? Does the board need to take action to open that third investment account? I believe we will have to have a resolution. Okay, good. good. That, yeah. So that'll be at a future meeting. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking the June account because by then we'll have settled out yeah. on where finances and banking are. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay, and item C kind of talked about our the baby. The new budget. Mm -hmm. Um hard to believe it's a 2324 budget. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like I just finished 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, true. So at the pre-meeting, we had a couple of discussions about uh, realigning a couple of things. If that changes it, then we probably want to redo this for yeah. the, the board. So one of those statements had to do with under um, both admin and the Community Health and Wellness Center, under office expenses, we have a line item for that office equipment and fixtures. So I'll make that amendment. We'll take that line item out and move those funds to office supplies. And then obviously we'll keep to our process of anything that is going to be expensed out. Um, accounting is made aware of put on that. Uh, man, mm -hmm. piggybacking on uh, Terry's good thought is, you know, whatever we do, we want the auditors to be comfortable with it, not yes. just boomerang back. Is it worth talking to them and saying we're making this adjustment? We already have. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I um, didn't get that. No, one. that's okay. On ramp. Um, after <laughs> after the last after the last finance meeting before the board, somewhere around there, I reached out to Paul at Nigro and Nigro and explained this is what we're looking at. This is how we're going to make these. No, changes. I know they said this wouldn't be an earthquake. Yes. Okay. I'm talking about what I heard as I walked in. Oh, yeah. About adjusting things. They, they haven't seen this yet. That won't be a problem for them at all. Okay. Got it. Then that's yeah. all I, I don't, I, it, good. Yes. <laughs> that, that won't be a challenge to them in any way. Very good. Thank you. So I can talk about a couple of the assumptions we briefly discussed. Please. Um, again, Jennifer, you're familiar with this because you've done this with me a couple times now. Um, in the revenue section, I generally, again, stay fairly conservative. In our interest and dividend income, um, I've got a 2% increase over last year. Um, I still am hearing that things are too volatile to be um, putting aggressive growth in there. Um, We've got under property tax revenue, mm -hmm. our historic average shows a 5.4 increase from uh, 16, 17 to 21, 22. I use the average of the 20 and 21 at 5%. Okay. So that's what I budgeted in mm -hmm. there. So the 2.2 million for the property tax revenue, uh, 2,277,000 uh, is essentially um, Five. Picked up by five percent from prior. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And since that's fairly in line with what we've seen over years before that, I felt like it was a safe yeah. estimate. Yeah. Oh, good. Under promise, over deliver. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next two line items are relatively new for us: the rental income least use, and that has to do with. Um, Mission Resource Conservation District yes. subleasing the space upstairs mm -hmm. and the expectation that the Gary Mary West PACE program will rent space out of the Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. So that puts those two, we have historically had lease um, space when Roth Rose was out at Mission. Mm -hmm. So it's not entirely new to us, yeah. but it's new back on having values for it. May I ask a question about program fees? Mm, yes. That feels new. Yeah. So program fees are um, essentially we had talked about once upon a time, some programs we may charge for, or some programs may have some sort of reimbursable. Yes. Um, this is a very tentative, conservative, we may be able to get reimbursement for the DPP. Good. Okay. I get it. So and I mean, you didn't, if, if we don't get anything, it's not going right. to flail the bottom line. So right. I like having that as a placeholder, an on-ramp for future years. We might as well initiate it now. Yeah. And whether it's for DPP or some other program unknown as of yet, right? Um, we'll have a placeholder for it. 
Great. Um, so th those be our income assumptions. Those would be our income assumptions. Thank you. Um, under admin expenses, I mean, a lot of these are pretty standard, so I don't have notes on a lot of them. Under admin expenses, the community health contracts. Um, right now, it's a single line item. We will continue to have each individual grantee listed like we typically do. Right. Um, that's an important piece for the community to see who's being funded. Right. Um, but that includes the um, funds that we've got for our regular grantees that you all just approved. It's got the youth fitness grant. And then it's got the two ongoing grants with North County Fire for the ambulance and senior medical services officer. The communication specialist, that will end at the end of this fiscal year. North County Fire is completely aware there's no challenges, issues with that. So that all will fall under that line item. Okay. Um, mission, oh, let's, uh, sorry, in admin under maintenance, uh, we talked about this one briefly. If you look at that one, I've got a fairly good size chunk. Maintenance repair. Maintenance and repairs you'll see in that first July. Right. I have an eleven thousand dollar expense mm -hmm. um, from our community uh, property condition assessment. Sorry, yes. from our property condition assessment we did almost two years ago, we only had one large outstanding item, and that was the final landscaping mm -hmm. for this whole end of the building. Mm -hmm. So. While I am hoping that the Mission Resource Conservation District grant funding options that we have with them will help to provide for some of the plans mm -hmm. on this, I did take that amount from the property condition assessment and plot that in there. So that multi-year maintenance plan, Jennifer, yes. that builds in from here. Okay. So that's why you'll see that large bump in July, even though I'm anticipating that we won't have to use it all. Okay. So that was that assumption. And then under uh, another newish piece, if you flip over to the community health and wellness side, under district direct care services. It's also on the other side. Yeah, because we'll have two, right? The idea is if we have programs that we're funding that aren't necessarily just specific to the wellness center, mm -hmm. Those are admin expenses, mm -hmm. right? Um, but these are specific to the wellness center. So you'll see in September, we have a district sponsored event for $5,500. That is that September family event where we've got Lions Club doing their vision. Yes. We know that that's our big kind of breakout event. So that has got some budget amount to it. And then we have another one in Feb. Uh, February of 24, that's where we had basically talked about doing a, <clears throat> whatever the next Women of Wellness version is, is, more of a, a woman's event. Um, women and family typically go together for that. So we're booking out funds for that so that we can make sure we've got supplies or whatever we need to do for that event. Uh, events, may I, may I comment on events for a minute? There seems to be a yearning and a longing for um, the community health fair that has been so successful in the past. Is there- September. Uh, and is it, where would I find it here? That's exactly what that district sponsored event, September event, that 5,500, that's to replace that big community health fair. So September 23. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, that's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the, I think part of I think part of why people are like going, oh, we you you know, we did used to do something is the and thank you, Rachel. We all know you were the mover and shaker on it. The wildlife preparation deal had such energy and such gratitude from the community that it, it kind of gave birth to this. Are you guys going to do a health fair again? So I think this is a 
great post COVID launch to get us yeah. kind of <laughs> yeah. you know, normalized. So I'm glad to see that. Yeah. And that that health fair isn't going to just be the standard sort of here's your pop-up yeah. tent, everybody stands around. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, let's actually bring services to that event. Mm -hmm. So that's where the Lions Gift of Sight event will be happening. We have vaccines. Scheduled. Vaccines nice. scheduled for kids going back to school and all of that. Mm -hmm. Thought, let alone then also all of our grantees being able to have yeah. their wares. Have a happy slide. But it'll let be at the wellness center. Yeah. We'll have the classrooms available so that they'll also be able to see, oh, this is a district program. Oh, this mental health first aid. This sounds amazing. And this will be a Saturday event, you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a Saturday event. We're, we have September 30th in mind. September 30th. Mm -hmm. What are the chances? I need another check. What are the chances of us having our parking lot done by then? Well, <laughs> well yeah, that's, that's, that, that's, 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 a, that's a hairy question. So, we have an opportunity that I'm researching while we're still building scope um, to get our solar still put in with infrastructure through, um, it's a long story short, we have a potential vendor that can also help us then gain the Inflation Reduction Act funds to help pay for that solar installation. And it would also pay for the uh, underground installation that goes into that the infrastructure. Line. Yeah, um, it would potentially pay for forty percent of that project. Oh, wow! So if we can have the parking lot paid from the Inflation Reduction Act, it might be worth Wait. putting off that mm -hmm. just the <laughs> shade. Um, I will know hopefully in the next month. So we met with the vendor last Friday. We sent him approval to access our SDG and E bills because they need to see what our utilization rates are. I gave him that access yesterday. They should be able to present to hopefully facilities yes. in May yes. where they'll lay out what that looks like. If facility sees it as viable, then facilities will bring it forward to the board. And we talked about this a lot in facilities actually as you might have noticed in the minutes um, that haven't been posted yet, actually. <laughs> but that whole the whole matrix of where is the where's the electrical box? Right. And I, as I mentioned to everybody, the high school solar, the infrastructure is going in, but it won't be active for several months because you got to get the infrastructure in. So if we can waylay uh and make sure that we don't make a mistake on infrastructure that could interrupt the beauty of the new parking lot. It, we're, we had a big discussion about that with Roy. Yeah. So, I mean, worst case scenario, if it looks like this infrastructure project could be a year out, instead of doing a full new parking lot and losing $100,000, we could potentially invest Sorry, 10, 20, yeah, in a slurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and re yeah. repaint. Repaint. Yeah, mm -hmm. So that is that is the delicate balance we're trying to walk on that right now. I, I, get, I guess, and I and I get all that. Um, the only concern I have, and we've done it before, I guess, is having a large event and having a parking lot that I don't think is safe. That's just my sense of it. When you get right down to it. Um, but having it at least resurfaced, I mean, I guess I would have a little more uh, peace of mind about that. And I don't think it costs us 10, 15,000 at the top end, but whatever. But so you we're, we're, we're discussing it deeply at facilities. Mm -hmm. um, so we are moving forward on it. If that looks like it's going to take too long, I do. I am still working with Rob Holmes, our consultant on the whole paving thing. So if we decide that we're just going to pull a trigger on a slurry, he has that ability to at least get us that access. I don't want to get into building maintenance stuff that your facilities that your guys is. Basically. You're welcome in. Yeah, no, but I just have a concern about that. Part. Well, and I agree with you. We're having the same, not to birdwalk, but the jointly owned parking lot behind the art center, and the between the art center there, it is a hellacious mess right now, mm. and that that. One is one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars for slurry and uh, lining. Yeah. 
So we're all we're all in parking lot Hades right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll be interested in hearing their presentation. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I I let them know that the vendor's name is called Site Logic, and they do a lot of infrastructure problem projects with municipalities as well as special districts. Mm -hmm. So again, they have a lot of the the understanding of the design build and the projects we have to go through. Um, what makes them a different creature, their niche, if you will, is that they bring to the table the funding opportunities that these Inflation Reduction Act or whatever state grants, they will bring that forward as part of the package and help us to gain resources through that we're eligible. We're eligible on the fact that we have an underserved population, we're, we've got some rural designation, um, that fits. And then the fact that we want to do a solar out there, potentially with a battery wall, that is right up there on that Inflation Reduction Act and Biden's plan for that. Um, if we could get those resources and get the majority of it paid for through that, we would get a better product and it would cost okay. us less. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to further developments. Yeah. Thank you. And, and again, that has all just recently come up. So I've been letting facilities know we're looking at that. We also had to um, talk about increasing the lighting in the parking lot mm -hmm. because it was considered too dark. So that would have to change out where some of the power is going in that parking lot as well. Works for me. So those were kind of the big assumptions that I had in there. Um, again, under community health and wellness center, under the health services and clinics, um, there's an expectation that we're gonna see more programming coming in. Um, so those are earmarking dollars there, but strategic planning will um, oversee and bring forward any potential program options. So okay. um, unless there's any other changes from y'all, I'll take that office equipment and fixtures out of those two. And otherwise we'll bring this budget forward to the board meeting. Wow. And I, I am noticing on the community health and wellness flip side, um, that this is a very familiar pattern. Yeah. Uh, we 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 are in the red for the beginning of the fiscal year. We even out, we go in the red, we even out, we go in the red, and we end up. Yeah. Yeah. That's and just that that's just the property tax flow. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm not I'm not alarmed by the red. It it is a it is a smaller margin. Yeah, yeah. it's we, a smaller margin, right? We here. knew that we would see uh, increased expenses with wellness center up and running. Yes, full time now. Yep. That's Why are you including an in interest in dividend income if you aren't including the Alvarado interest? That is just from the um, Cal Trust and Lake. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just using the historics that we've had on that. Okay. Looks good. Well done. All right. Well, thank you on that. Not bad for a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that I get to even like beginner status. <laughs> um, and real quick, as, as an aside, and I assume it fit in the budget someplace or come up, um, I saw that uh, little article in the paper about um, the county um sending over some money for us oh and where would you hide that at so we spent that money back in 2021 budget yeah um and this is basically the county paying us back for okay. things that okay. we did so um, it, it doesn't it. it doesn't live in the budget anywhere um, it should come in in this fiscal year right now. I'm expecting would, to get it this fiscal that, year. Yeah. Um, and I think we have a random line item. I don't know. It'll just be excess. It'll be excess funds. We've not, yeah. um, the district's never received grant funds before, so this will be the first time. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for dogging it, though. Well, <laughs> it took some I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, in the future, 
we would apply for that grant under the foundation mm -hmm. and it would go through the foundation books um but for this year well oh, it's not a, it's not grant money oh it is well that's okay so if the, you say something that's not how i read it in the article it, okay. it, the community enhancement it is actually considered grant funds how they they will grant it to us so we'll put it in a grant fund line item mm -hmm. that we'll make account. yeah we just we just got notified to the arts group yeah for our requested grant so we actually were awarded this back in August, September, September, I think September, September. Um, but they had a typo in the name and mm -hmm. it has taken until now to make yeah. that correct. Mm -hmm. So this is why I haven't talked about the grant because I was like, oh yeah, we already received it, but I've just been waiting to get the money. Yeah. So we haven't received it. Right. No, not yet. Yeah. It didn't work. But now it went through the final board meeting where they approved it with the correct name and with the correct everything. So. Okay. Usually they'll send out the grant checks about a month after they receive their signed contract, which I've already sent to them. So. Okay. Very good. Alrighty. Uh, review of item D. Current AP policy. I assume that has to do with signing checks. That's the one that has to do with signing checks. So um, let me let me just say this. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Certainly, um, your treasurer is here at least twice a month on the finance committee meeting and, and uh, the board meeting. It would only be that period, the last half of the month, where you have checks come in that um, got to be signed. I don't mind coming over and signing them. I'm just not always around to do it. I think, personally, I think it's unfair to expect another board member, Barbara, for example, in this case, to take her time to come over here. I'm thrilled that she does it. I'm glad that she does. You too, whatever. But you shouldn't have to do that. Um, so we just got to figure out some way um, to do the last two weeks of the month. That's what it boils down to be. Meaning that I, I would hope that we ought to be able to find a way to have the checks ready on Wednesday instead of on a Thursday. We got to, that should be an easy fix. So that I could sign them today, for example, instead of getting a call tomorrow saying come over and sign checks, right? Makes no sense whatsoever. Is that a problem? Uh, we'll need to double check with Marnie's schedule to see if we can flex move her to a different day. Um, I think Wednesdays are a challenge for her, but maybe we can see what she can do on Tuesdays. So we hold the checks and I'll sign them on the next week. The the only particular challenge, if you want to address yeah, that, the only challenge is a lot of the times people are looking for 50% deposit to produce some work for, you know, signing. Yeah, but those are one offs. I mean, those those are not on a regular basis, right? Oh, we're seeing quite they, a few. But now. If, they, if they are, just do them out of sequence. I mean, the point of the matter is if someone's doing a special project, and you're needing an advanced deposit, that's a one-timer for that particular vendor. It could be on a Monday. It could be on a Friday. So so what about the checks when I get a lot like this one week? I, I receive stuff today that's due May 10th. So if we held it off for a week plus mail time, plus, you know, processing. Who would send you something that you would get you would eight days before it's due? Um, Conica no Milta. Yeah. <laughs> Today, yeah. I think it was a couple of utilities, Pitney Bowes. So, that's one of the challenges that I encountered here. I hadn't seen that before either in my previous employer. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of those, well, not a lot, but there's a percentage where we noticed, like, when I started cleaning it up, there were some things that said, you know, they would send you two or three copies because they considered it late, and I had to spend some time cleaning it up, realizing they give them a very, they give us a very short window on some of these. So those are the ones that we finally got into a very nice rhythm with that weekly signing. Um, I agree with you, you know, like weekly signing is very different. Because like at my other place, we were doing 30 days. Yeah, I, like I say, sometimes it's not an issue for me, but I travel some. I mean, right. it just happens. Um, right. And, <clears throat> um, but I, 
I just feel bad if you have to call Barbara to come in or even even Jennifer. Well, it's just, just not right. I expect that kind of as a member of the committee, and I'm five minutes away. I, I get and and I, I get your point too. It's not right. Well, I, I, what if you weren't? What if it was somebody else? I, I understand. Yeah. I, I'm just saying that the the uh, kind of the um, uh, reality situations that are being dealt with. Um, what about when you go on your world cruise? What are we going to do? <laughs> There you go. Well, that's why we have three. So I, I can see why you're going for a the standard B once a week signing, <clears throat> and that these one offs we just handle in some way. I, mm -hmm. I I love efficiency. I do, but I also know there's wonky things that happen. Um, so I maybe Marnie can come in on Tuesdays and see if we can use that model. Because we're here to the first two Wednesdays of every month. We certainly are. <laughs> well, and, and so we can we can look at making those change. Um, as we just have this conversation here, we and we've also been cleaning our policy book because mm -hmm. it's a little outdated. We did find a policy that technically in was it 2014? 2006. 2006. Oh yeah, 2006. Yeah, um, that. yeah, that policy. So they changed it to obviously five thousand dollars or more, two signatures, no matter what. That's built into the bank right now. Right. Um, but it allowed the administrator, and that ends up being the whatever title we call that to. That policy put that maximum dollar amount to five hundred to sign. Now that's been our policy on the books. That practice obviously changed sometime post by pre me, sometime in the Bobby era. It's if the preference is for the committee to keep board members as the only signers, we need to update the policy either way. That was update the policy. I, <clears throat> um, I'm not a control freak, but um, you can as say a, you are too. It'd be okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, as a practical matter. We have some responsibilities. We have some accountability. So if I'm going to be accountable, then it's going to be in my name on the cut and pick and check or somebody else that shares the same accountability mm -hmm. with me. And, um, and and there's no reflection on you. Uh, absolutely. Right. It, is, it right. is just, you know, we have some responsibilities here and we'll, we'll own up to them, but we're going to make the, the practice and, and the process work in our favor and not against us. Okay. So we'll make sure that this is a policy then that gets amended um, or whatever we're going to end up doing with the policy book. Um, Jeff and I are still working on that. That's going to be a labor. They're laughing because they've seen the share folder that has all the thousands of files in it. Um, so that's that's fine. We'll set that up. We'll double check with Marty to see what the system is. Maybe we can get her to come in earlier or... Where's her office at? Here locally, right? Locally. Yeah, she's she does a, she has clients all over town, so it really just depends on what day she can fit us. Okay. 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 All right. I'm good. Anything else for you? I'm good. Yep. All right. Me too. There are any no other comments, questions, or issues, or complaints? <laughs> Good job, ladies. Yes, thank you all very much. Here, I'm returning my big binder. <laughs> <laughs>